Hi, and welcome back to At Your Service. This is lesson number eight, 10 facts about oxygen. So for number one, for healthcare students, it's very common to use the symbol O2 and call it oxygen. But in chemistry, actually oxygen is simply the letter O. So it's a single atom. At standard pressure and temperature, it takes two atoms of oxygen to bind, hence forming what we call dioxygen. So when you're in the hospital, when we say oxygen, we are actually referring to dioxygen. Number two, oxygen is a drug. It's considered a drug because it has a specific biochemical and physiologic effect. It also has a, a distinct specific range of effective doses. And number three, it has well-defined adverse effects if given at higher doses, what we call oxygen toxicity. There are various body systems that can be damaged or that can be altered when oxygen is given at higher doses. So we'll have a separate video on oxygen oxygen toxicity so please subscribe and watch out for this video so fact number three who discovered oxygen so there are actually two people or two scientists who are credited for discovering the chemical oxygen Carl Scheel and Joseph Priestley although they discovered oxygen at two different times Scheel discovered it in 1773 Priestley discovered it in 1774 but during that time he didn't call it as oxygen but rather as deflogisticated air uh, most tech books regard Priestley as the one who discovered oxygen because his findings were published first but the term oxygen was actually coined by okay I'm not a French person but I'll try to pronounce this um, as accurate as possible this was coined by Antoine Lavoisier did I say it right? Okay, so that's who discovered oxygen and who called it oxygen. Fact number four, although most of us know oxygen for its medical use, the first time it was used for medical purposes was actually around 1917. Aside from medical purposes, oxygen is also used in the production of steel, plastic, and as a rocket propellant. Fact number five, this is a common misconception on oxygen. Oxygen is not flammable. It's not inflammable and also not flammable. The words flammable and inflammable are just the same. So oxygen is not flammable, but it supports combustion. When you say flammable, it's a substance that burns. Oxygen doesn't burn, but if you add oxygen to a flame, it will foster the flame. It will make the flames larger. That is why it is a common practice or it's a common policy in, among hospital or healthcare institutions not to store oxygen near flames or areas that are at risk risk for starting flames or starting fires. So fact number six, do not smoke or never smoke around or near oxygen. Not because it is flammable, we just established that, but because of three other reasons. Reason number one, cigarette smoking produces smoke, carbon monoxide, and other harmful chemicals. And these chemicals reduce the availability of oxygen and irritates the patient's airways. Number two, if the ash from your cigarette falls and this ash smolders when exposed to oxygen, oxygen will feed the flame and make it bigger. And number three and third reason for not smoking around oxygen is we want to avoid secondhand smoking. And consider also the fact that the residue from the cigarette smoke remains in the room even after the fire or the cigarette fire is extinguished. Fact number seven. It's a common misconception among people that when you exhale air, you are exhaling carbon dioxide and when you inhale air, you are inhaling oxygen. This is actually not true because the air around us actually contains only 21% of oxygen and a larger percentage is actually nitrogen. And when we exhale, we're not only exhaling carbon dioxide, in fact, the largest component of exhaled air is actually nitrogen. Exhaled air contains 78% 78% nitrogen, 16% oxygen, and about 4% carbon dioxide and the remaining percentage are your trace gases like argon. So it's not true that when you exhale air or when you breathe out, you are breathing out carbon dioxide. Uh, the truth is you're actually exhaling large amounts of nitrogen and just small amounts of carbon dioxide. This is also the exact reason why mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation in the event of cardiac arrest is still acceptable because exhaled air contains a considerable amount of oxygen. 
<clears throat> Fact number eight, this is more applicable to the application or the administration of oxygen than oxygen itself. So oxygen therapy does, doesn't always require humidification. So this is in stark contrast to what we actually know or what they teach us in school. So according to several guidelines, including the British Thoracic Society guidelines, humidification isn't required if you are administering oxygen at a flow rate of four liters per minute or less. A good example to this is when you give oxygen via nasal cannula and you're using two liters per minute you don't actually need to use the bubble humidifiers uh, the rationale for this practice was that the delivery of oxygen or receiving oxygen supplementation causes airway dryness and mucosal irritation there have been several research or there have been several studies that prove that with or without humidification mucosal irritation airway dryness still exists so adding humidity or using bubble humidifiers with your nasal cannulas it doesn't improve anything also included in this guideline is when you administer oxygen at a high flow rate but for short duration so you don't need to put humidity or to add humidity if you're using a non-rebreathing mask at 15 liters per minute because it is not advisable to place a patient in non-rebreather for a long period of time so when do you actually need to humidify oxygen? So a better criteria for humidification is when you are administering oxygen directly to the patient's lower airway. So for example, you are caring for a patient with a tracheostomy tube or with an endotracheal tube. Since the advanced airway has bypassed the upper airways, number nine is a fact for all beginners. During respiratory distress, it's not needed to have a medical order just to start oxygen therapy. And I'm not even specifying how many liters or what type of oxygen device you need to use. But if you're worried about about oxygen toxicity take note that oxygen toxicity doesn't happen within a span of minutes or within a span of hours it takes longer than that if you're scared of oxygen induced hypercarbia or the elevated amounts of carbon dioxide because of administration of oxygen remember that this again doesn't happen instantly it takes time for the carbon dioxide to increase and for fact number 10, you can use oxygen to deliver aerosolized medications like uh, your beta-adrenergics, your anticholinergic, your mucolytic. If you're worried about CO2 retainers like in cases of COPD, again, it's safe. It's still safe to use oxygen to deliver aerosols to COPD patients as long as the flow doesn't exceed 6 liters per minute. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Those were the 10 facts about oxygen and oxygen therapy that you should know. Thank you for watching and I hope I'll see you on the next lesson.